It's coming to Quincy, and it's a game changer. Fiber is the fastest technology available, and Adams is bringing fiber to the home. Nothing else compares to fiber, and Adams will be connecting Quincy neighborhoods to this lightning-fast internet and telephone service with no gimmick pricing and local service. Find out how your neighborhood can become a fiber hood. Just take the quick survey at followthefiber.net. Adams, the better and now faster way to connect. Federated Insurance is a lot like the family businesses we help protect. For 105 years and counting, Federated has shared the common values that have served our clients well. Federated Insurance, it's our business to protect yours. Call Tony Reese in Quincy at 223-4623. Around here, people matter, and relationships are built on trust. That's the way it is at Town & Country Bank. Real people who like things simple, honest, and done right. And our roots are right here, so we're truly local. If you already do business with us, then you know how good banking can be. And if you're not, well, maybe you should. Town & Country Bank, you'll like how we do business. Part of the HNB Bank family. Your state farm. Obviously, uh, week one, we made a lot of mistakes up at Rockford. Um, I saw a lot of improvement uh, during the game at Alton Marquette. Uh, and then, obviously, going back and watching video, a lot of improvement. Now, there's still some areas of concern, areas that we needed to have addressed again this week, um, areas that we still need to get better of going in from week, week two to three. But, again, uh, uh, whether we want to consider ourselves young or inexperienced, uh, both of those may be correct statements. Um, you know, we, we hope that e each week that's our goal as a coaching staff is just to continue to get better, uh, being able to to compete and give ourselves an opportunity uh, to win. And when I say that, uh, there's growing pains. Uh, you know, we, we've shortened our playbook. Um, you know, if it was 20 pages, we're now down to two. Um, you know, each week we may we may continue to add. But, you know, we just had to, after week one to two, say, okay, these were the things that we now were capable of doing. You know, we just can't ask whether it's a quarterback or, or a tailback or up front. We just can't ask too much of people. You know, we just got to ask people to be able to do what they're capable of doing, do it well, and continue to get better from that and eventually being able to expand from that. So I guess that being said, maybe we just had too much too many expectations as a coaching staff going into week one. So uh, we, we've we've uh, shortened things. We've gone back again and just continued to say, hey, we're going to work at the basics on these things. We're going to get better at these things. And that's just, you know, the basics of football, running and, and blocking and tackling and, and holding on to the football, um, not, not having turnovers, uh, causing turnovers. You know, we've always been a believer that, uh, the one stat of the takeaway giveaway normally in most games uh, tells the message of what's happened. And uh, that that was week one. That was an example. Held true. Week two example of the person winning the takeaway giveaway won that football game. So going into week three, obviously versus Vashon, that's one of the major areas that we've obviously uh, talked about all week. We'll continue to talk about all the way up to game time is just you know, making sure at the end of the day we take care of the football and we try to take the football away from our opponent. I know last week he brought this up, but I think it really showed as the game went along just how important it is to practice on an actual field rather than what you practiced on the month of August. Well, and we've been blessed all week. You know, it, it rains on Wednesday or Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning, rains five inches in Quincy. And normally we would have been, where are we going? Do we have a place? Uh, but, you know, it was great to walk out Wednesday afternoon. You wouldn't have known it had rained a drop. 
I mean, we practiced out there for three and a half hours, and there was no factor of all of anything being wet or that it had rained. So I guess that being said, uh, the field was success. The water drained it down through it. Um, er everything was dry. We were able to have a great successful practice. Now, we did miss a little bit of practice time on uh, Tuesday. We got about an hour and 40 minutes in before the thunder came. So you know, there's still things that you know would keep you off of a field like thunder and lightning, but you know, rain and wet uh, no longer keeps us from being able to not be able to run through our plays and do what we need to do to get better. Vishon comes in, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong, or you make your own analogy, but I keep thinking Peoria Manual, a school that's really well known for basketball, football-wise may struggle a little bit, but uh, you know, they come in here with a lot of great athletes, and they're going to fly around, and, and you just have to try and keep them contained, so to speak. Well, they're going to be awful quick. They're going to be awful fast. Uh, they're going to be guys that can, if we let them get loose, they're going to get loose and they're going to make big plays. Uh, they thrive off of big plays. Uh, defensively, uh, they take 11 guys and throw them out there on the field. They may be in a different spot every play, uh, and they're capable of two of just flying to the football. For us tonight, it will be very difficult for us just to make a big play because of their quickness. So, you know, for us, eight, 10 yard gains. Are, are going to go be big plays for us, and then we got to line up, and we got to block, and we got to go at it again. So you know, for for us, I don't see us tonight uh, making 80 yard plays very much, just because of they're, they're going to run us down. Uh, they're going to make a play on us eventually. So if we if we can make uh, some you know 10 20 yard gains here and there, keep drives going. Uh, block and, and and stay together. Communicate. You know, we just want to see. We, we just want to see uh, another step of getting better, and then that's part of the maturity of a football team. Um, you know, uh, football is. You know, what what you see in in August is not what we want to show in November. Uh, November is a final product, and the way that it's set up in the state of Illinois that you don't get any practice games. It's it's really let's get started, hit a couple times, and you're going to have a ball game. There's just not a whole lot of time to get ready. So you know you you've got to get better each week, and that's the one thing that I would tell you, especially about 2013 football that fell under the same categories as this last year did of all the different less practice time and different things was last year they continued to get better. I mean, we were still improving when we got to the quarterfinals. Loved at that point just to have continued to play. Uh, and, and so that's what the way we need to measure these guys is, is, is how much better can we get each and every week. And I'm hoping to see improvement from week two to week three. You had a couple guys dinged up last week. Give us a health status for a couple of your players. Well, Ar Orange is fine. I mean, Orange was just, you know, he, he had some cramps and needed to get some fluids back in himself. And so, you know, we, we believe he'll be 100% this week. Now, um, L.B. Cornwell may have lost him for the year. Hope we have it. Uh, you know, there's just, you know, at this point too too early to tell. But he's had surgery uh, in the last couple of days. Uh, I expect he'll be at the ball game tonight and be on our sideline. be the first time that I've seen him uh, in person uh, to be able to, to, to talk to him. But uh, you know, he's a fighter. Uh, he doesn't want it to be over. And then we'll just, you know, time, time will tell. But uh, he, he broke his arm uh, around the elbow and has had to have a plate and all put in his arm. But, uh, you know, we it, it's a game of contact. Those things happen. He understands that. Uh, but would obviously like to be able, since it's a senior year, to get back to the field and have, have some more time. So we'll just see see how he heals and how time passes. And, and uh, hopefully at some point we'll have another report on him. Enjoy the home opener. Tim, always an honor. We appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you when it's over. That's head coach Bill Cannell as Q&E gets set to take on Vashon High School. We'll have more in just a few moments here on WTAD. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Michael Libman, financial service representative with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls, even with the internet and email. I feel it's important to really get to know you and your family's needs. Otherwise, how will I know what direction you need to take? Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Lipman. He makes house calls.
A loved one passes on, and for a moment, time seems to stand still. My husband was my whole world. We spent so much time together. Making funeral arrangements is never easy. We can help you create a ceremony with sensitivity, compassion, and respect. Hanson Spear Funeral Home, celebrating a life well lived. Around here, people matter, and relationships are built on trust. That's the way it is at Town & Country Bank. Real people who like things simple, honest, and done right. And our roots are right here, so we're truly local. If you already do business with us, then you know how good banking can be. And if you're not, well, maybe you should. Town & Country Bank, you'll like how we do business. Part of the HNB Bank family. Your State Farm agent, Charles Schultz, can help get you to a better state. From cost to coverage, Charles can develop a plan just for you. This is Charles Schultz. Call me at 224-6665. Or drop by my office next to County Market at 48th and Broadway. And together, we'll review your insurance needs. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Michael Libman, financial service representative with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls, even with the internet and email. I feel it's important to really get to know you and your family's needs. Otherwise, how will I know what direction you need to take? Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Lipman. He makes house calls. back brand new scoreboard for QND uh, an electronic scoreboard that's uh, got the pinpoint lighting and the and I I'm blanking on the phrase I want to use uh, like the but, uh, high def type of yeah, kind of sort yeah, of yeah I mean, but the, uh, the size of the TV in your living room isn't it I mean my goodness kind of <laughs> it's a little bit bigger but not by much but uh, much easier to read than the old scoreboard here at QND field where if bulbs were out, you had all kinds of fun trying to distinguish fives and eights and things of that nature. So we got that going for us. QND has won the toss, I believe, and elected to receive. QND and their blue on blue. Let's start with Bashan, though. Their uniforms are white jerseys with gray pants, blue numbers, and the conventional Wolverine helmet in blue and silver. And they have silver trim on their royal blue numbers. QND, blue on blue, as I mentioned, blue jerseys, blue pants, white numbers, gold trim. And, of course, the Golden Domes. Dalen Anders is back to receive the kick. And he is flanked by Parker Kinsel, And also by, let's see who's over on the far side. Grant Carper. Carper, 41. Yep. So we are about ready for action here in the home opener for the QND Football Raiders. With the ball on the tee for Vachon is number 21, Charvez Lewis. Q&D adjusting here for some reason, expecting that Vashon may even try a short kick or an onside kick. Dalen Anders is now the only one deep. Everyone else is either at the 40-yard line or at about the 50-yard line. Lewis approaches the ball and gets a toe kick underway. It's a low rolling ground ball that Anders picks up on the near hash mark, goes right up the middle of the field and has a burst. He's at the 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, and he will slide to a stop inside the 40-yard line at about the 39. So a good return by Dale and Anders, a middle return for the senior running back for QND. And Anders takes it into Wolverine territory. It's first and 10 QND at the Bashan 39-yard line. Well, nice start for QND. Just kind of an easy squib kick. Dale and Anders took his time with it, didn't want to dive on it, wanted to use his playmaking ability. Colin picked it up, and you could tell with about three or four steps, he found a nice hole and uh, set the Raiders in some good field position. So first and 10 QND from the Bashan 39-yard line. Max Memberlow, the quarterback. Blake Ulrich is the center. 
And Jordan Obert is split to the near side. Power eye behind Max Venverlo. Dalen Anders is the deep back. Venverlo looks over to Vashon defense. They jump but not into the neutral zone. Hand off is to Logan Arns. And Arns will pound his way to about the 35-yard line. A hard-earned four yards for Arns on his first carry. Good to see him back in the backfield, Kyle. As Coach cannot yeah. mention, some cramping issues last week down in Alton. But uh, back in there tonight to start the game. And it's only one kid, but Logan Arns makes a di- big difference on both sides of the ball for QND. Well, you're right. Offense, defense, and even special teams. He's, he's kind of one they look to uh, in a lot of different areas. So they're going right back to him here, first play of the game, to set up QND with a, a pretty good second down look. Ball right on the 40, or excuse me, the 35 of Bashan. Second and six. Pitch it wide to Anders. Anders will get the corner turn. He will bounce it to the sideline and then lower his shoulder. Gets the first down inside the 30 yard line of Bashan at around the 28. And that's a pickup of about seven, but that's good enough for a Raider first down. Good look there from Anders. That time using the wide side of the field there to the pitch right, coming from the left hash. So lots of room for Dalen Anders to work. Use that quick speed there. Got to the corner and then. Chains moving. So good start here for the Raiders offensively. See if they can get out of the huddle here, show some rhythm, and uh, uh, start off this field with a touchdown drive. Good job by the Raider line, Kyle, blocking on that far corner, which would be the offense's right. They really caved in the right side of that offense or defensive line, excuse me, and gave Anders a chance to get to the corner and make a decision whether they wanted to go inside or continue on outside. Yeah, they, they, it was a nice job. They kind of hammered that down for him. And so far, I'm a little uh, surprised from Bashan defensively they've only shown four down linemen so far you know i'd be surprised if they don't go to five or even six here as they gonna warm up to this raider offense on the power i give it to parker Kinsel. he cuts outside and back inside he has at least 10 yards and he's dragging wolverines to about the 16 yard line that's going to be a pickup of close to 12 yards for parker Kinsel on his first touch and the raiders have another first down there you go everyone uh, everyone in the backfield so far all three running backs with a nice carry and all of them off to a pretty sharp start flying around so a uh, couple off the right side, this time off the left side. And Kinsel, again, only about 145 pounds. But 145 pounds, I don't want to have to tackle. He, man, he runs hard and it's fun to watch. Ball just outside the Vashon 15-yard line. First and 10 QND as they head towards the south end zone. Out of the power eye from the near hash. Turn, give it to Kinsel again. He tries to split two defenders and a good job by the Vashon defense of wrapping up Kinsel for a short gain. Let's see where they finally spot. They're going to give Kinsel a gain of two to the 13-yard line. It'll be second and eight for Q&E in what is definitely four-down territory. That time looked like Vashon might have jammed at the box there a little bit more. Um, you know, you got big Lamonte Woods there, 5'7", 280-pound junior right there in the middle. So he's he's a big guy to move around. He, they're going to have to try to uh, maneuver around here. And, uh, you know, certainly Kinsel and, and uh, Irons in the middle, uh, runs up the middle of the field. They've got to keep an eye out for him. Ball on the near hash, second and eight for QND, and the right guard moves for the Raiders. Basically, he fell off balance on his own. He put his hand down on the turf and kind of lost his balance and had to right himself, but he moved after set had been called. So it's a five-yard walk-off on QND, and what was second and eight now becomes second and 13 for QND. But the ball is still in the red zone for the Raiders. Well, certainly not what you want to see for QND. Again, this is... Talked about a lot last week. You know, this is, you know, try to get four to six yards of carry, and sometimes those five yards can really derail. A uh, counter to Anders, and he takes off up the middle of the field, and he has the first down inside the five yard line. Boy, that play opened up perfectly the way you want a counter to open up. Yeah, kind of just counter back to the right hand side. Anders shuffles just a little bit in the backfield, uh, showed some patience, let a hole open up, and then he, he hit that hole right up the middle again. He's done that a couple times today. First time on the kickoff. Really, mm-hmm. when he planted that foot, really took off. We talk about, talked about that last week. It almost looked like he had trouble down in Alton. We're seeing a little bit different tonight when he plants that foot. Put the ball down at the five first and goal Raiders. Give it to Kinsel. He bounces off one man and is wrapped up by two Wolverines down and around the two-yard line. We'll see where they finally spot the ball. But it's going to be second and goal for QND, and they will put the ball in between the one and two-yard line. So a gain of about three and a half for Parker Kinsel. And we'll bring up second and goal for the Raiders with about five feet to go. I'm sure the Raiders won't uh, outthink themselves here. I, I suspect <laughs> we'll see Logan Aarons or, uh, or Kinsel get the call up the middle here. Pemberlo under center. Bashan moving around, jumping around. They give it to Arns, and Arns is into the end zone for the touchdown. Logan Arns is becoming the best fantasy player q and has. <laughs> he has like four touchdowns on the year. Three touchdowns, anyway. He takes right, so it in from two yards out for the touchdown. Yeah, and it, it is. I mean, both... 
both uh, uh, Kinsel and Irons, I mean, neither one of them is a, is a 200 pound, you know, prototypical battering ram. Yeah, battering ram that you got to have four or five guys typically jump on before you bring down just because they're so big. They're small, feisty, hard running fullbacks, and uh, man, they, they just complement each other real well, especially with uh, Dale and Andrew's speed at tailback. And Cooper Reese with the extra point, bangs it through, and the Raiders lead it 7 0. They can even put messages up on the new scoreboard, like touchdown Raiders exclamation point. Of course, they did 45 seconds after the touchdown was scored. But, and, you, know. you know, it's they're, they're breaking it in. It looks good. <laughs> point is good. Point is good. Just, I so, love it. So the Raiders lead it 7 nothing on a drive that encompassed about 38, 39 yards. And it, they did, uh, the Raiders went those 39 yards in seven plays, so. A three-minute drive, or just about exactly a three-minute drive to go 39 yards, and kind of what the doctor ordered, Kyle, make Bashan work on defense so their wide receivers don't aren't real fresh just running up and down the field and maybe catch long bombs all night. Yeah, they sure, you're certainly right. They, they uh, you know, real physical start there for Q&D, lots of inside runs, you know, and, and don't forget, you know, as well, kind of what got that drive started. Again, it's only a 39-yard touchdown drive. Dalen Anders uh, looking real sharp there on the kick return. Found a seam there on a squib kick and picked up some good yards in the kick return for q &E to set him up with that short field. So, you're right, couldn't ask for much more in this first three minutes of this ball game from the Raiders. And now, let's see if this defense can hold off that Wolverine passing attack. Cooper Reese will kick off for the Raiders, has the wind at his back. Let's see if he can put it into the end zone for the automatic touchback. Try and pick up the Bashan return men. We'll see if we have to mention any of them or whether this ball ends up in the end zone. Reese approaches the ball, and he kicks it deep. It's going to be just short of the goal line at about the one or two yard line. And bouncing it to the outside is Brandon Jones, and then Jones is grabbed and escorted out of bounds by Blake Hildenbrink. I thought Hildenbrink was going to go with the gut wrench suplex there, but thought better of it. He had him from behind around the waist, and it looked like he wanted for all the world to lift him up and drop him on his shoulders, but let go at the right moment. I like the word escorted. You escorted him out of bounds only the way that Blake Hildebrink could. Aggressively. Yeah. It, it kind of, you know, Jones really lucky to even take that ball, and they were both lined up at the 15-yard line mm -hmm. to, you know, to catch the kick, so not, not a real good feel there for Reese's well, foot there. I, don't think, I think that's the first time all year that Cooper Reese has kicked off, maybe the second or third. I can't remember how many times he kicked last week. And all. Inside give on the first play is a running play, and it's going to get about 12, 13 yards for Vashon. Charvez Lewis. Charvez Lewis is the ball carrier, and Vashon crosses up QND. They were thinking pass first all the way, and Lewis takes it from about the 17 out to the 31 for a gain of 14 on first down. And Lewis wasn't waiting for any holes to open up. He took that ball. It seemed like he was going full speed within about two steps. Spread offense, two by two of the receivers with a sidecar. And the snap goes right to Lewis. He goes through a hole and gets tackled short of the 35. Austin Tappy crashed down from his defensive end position to help out on the tackle. Luke Frieden there as well for QND. But it's a quick gain of three, we'll call it. And it'll bring up second and seven for the Wolverines. So looks like the Wolverines might be seeing if they can get maybe the QND secondary to to play a little tighter, to play a little, you know, a little closer line of scrimmage than maybe they had practiced this week. Surprising to see him go uh, to the ground, first two plays. Out of the spread, three by one of the receivers. Inside give again to Lewis. He gets around one tackle but has to cut back, and in doing so, there's about five Raiders there, but Lewis did a good job to mm -hmm. keep his feet moving there, and even though it looked like he was surrounded by four Raiders, he picked up three more yards, close to four, actually. Put the ball at the 37 at QND, and it's going to bring up third and four for Vashon. Yeah, and it's a big, it's a big uh, four yards too. I mean, you know, if you go into the play third and eight, there, defensive line for Q and D can really pin the ears back and go after the quarterback, assuming it's a passing down. And here, at a uh, shorter yardage situation, gives them a little bit more options, and you don't feel like you have to drop back and throw it ten yards downfield. Third and four, four of a shot from their own thirty-seven. Q and D leading seven nothing. Raiders show blitz, and the quarterback Dickens gets the pass or snap, throws a duck up, and it's tipped around twice and incomplete. Jordan Over was in coverage along with one of the safeties. I think Carson Varden, Vonderhardy was there. And only because the pass was a duck and it floated into the wind gave the Raider defenders a chance to go up and maybe knock the ball away. But we saw Randy Holt last week for Alton Marquette come down with six or seven catches in the same type of play. <laughs> That's right. It didn't bother him too much. 
Yeah, Dickens there thrown into the wind a little bit. Might have uh, slowed that ball down a little bit. You know, they've had a lot of success in the air. That again, first time they tried the pass um, tonight. But Dickens comes into the ball game tonight, uh, five almost 550 passing yards. So I mean, this is this is a team that's used to moving the ball through the air and uh, uh, getting picking up first downs. Rashawn's punt is a, off the side of the foot. It's a shanky very much punt, and then it bounces back here, and he's way past two Wolverines, and the Raiders will take over inside the Vashon 40 at about the 37-yard line. And I'm not sure. that That's a one-yard punt, Kyle. I'm not even sure it was a yard. I, it You're right. Now I, I think it was again. positive, but I'll spend I, think I, think, I think that's a positive one-foot punt. Yeah. And, and Coach Cannell told me this morning that the punter lined up seven or eight yards behind the center. That time he was a good 11 yards behind the right. center, but he kicked it 11 yards. From where the down marker was, the ball marker was over on the far sideline, that ball ended up maybe a rotation forward. Yeah. So the Raiders take over inside Vachon territory, leading 7-0, 7 nothing, 16 left to go in the first quarter. Power eye, single receiver, far side, ball in the near hash, but the Anders up the middle. He skitters, he skates, and he's got 10 yards inside the 30-yard line, close to the 27. And they give him the 26 for a gain of 11 for Dalen Anders. And you can just tell a big difference in watching Anders run tonight and the way he feels with his feet under him and it just, just feeling more comfortable on this turf uh, versus last week in Alton, Marquette. I mean, just, you know, he, could, he got going a little bit there in the second half, but just really unsure. Tonight he's just planting, and, and when he zips up field, man, he's zipping tonight. First and 10 Q&D, put the ball in the Vashon 26. Again, the ball on the near hash out of the power eye. Vashon showing blitz. And they give it to Kinsel. Big hole for Parker Kinsel. And then he takes a Vachon player for a ride and gets close to five yards from the 26 down to the 21. I'm trying to catch the number there. Put the tackle on. It was a nice hit there on Kinsel. They put the ball down to the 21. I think it was John Mitchell. One of the leading tacklers, yeah. Yeah, I mean, a a nice hit there from Mitchell and uh, a good run. We're seeing Vachon. It looks like they adjust a little bit there defensively. Looks like they might have had about eight guys there in the box. Safety tightening up. Uh, as well at about seven yards uh, from what I can tell from this angle. So looks like they're going to throw more guys in the box, tighten them up inside here, bring that safety in, and, and really try to put the pinch on this Raiders run game. Second and five, give it to Anders. Big hole around the right tackle. He will try and run over defender and does escape that defender and keeps the pile moving forward. He's down around the five-yard line. And that's going to be close to a 16-yard gain for Dale and Anders, and he took that handoff, Kyle, and you could tell that play was designed to go right around tackle, and that hole was wide open wide there. Open. Yeah, we had a good angle here from the spread. You could really see that uh, hole open up. In fact, I think one of the props there, you know, I didn't catch the receiver blocking for Q&E there, but Anders almost got out to that cornerback mm-hmm. so fast that the re- receiver wasn't, you know, all the way engaged or, or you know, with, with the cornerback. So Anders... Um, you know, the cornerback was able to catch up with the Anders there quicker than what the receiver was anticipating. And now a flag flies in as Max Bimberlo turned to get Kinsel and Hilgenbrink lined up properly in the power eye. And the far side linesman threw a flag, and it's a dead ball Ill- illegal procedure penalty on QND. So the Raiders will be backed up five yards. It'll be first and goal from the 10. Back to your point, Kyle, about the run by Anders. What you're saying is Anders got there so quick, the wide receiver hadn't in, hadn't even started his block yet on a yeah. defender because he had to go find one to block. Right. Cornerback uh, had his arms full there before he realized what was going on. From the far hash on first and 10, give it to Kinsel. He literally ducks under one tackle and squirms his way to about the four-yard line. Kinsel took that ball. He gets to full speed quick out of that power yeah, icon. Does. Talking about Parker Kinsel. And he got that ball full speed and immediately just low bridged the defender underneath his forearm and got six yards on the carry. You know, what you love about Kinsel as a, as a fullback, too, always keeping his shoulders upfield. Mm-hmm. Isn't, you know, doesn't necessarily shuffling. He's got his feet moving upfield. He's got his shoulders facing upfield. Uh, just what a coach is asking his fullbacks to do. Not dance around. Don't be too patient. Get upfield and go. Second and goal from the four for Q&A. Raiders already lead at 7 nothing. Rashawn showing blitz between the both guard holes, if you will. Raiders turn, give it to Anders. He's looking for a hole, and he won't find one. He'll get a gain of maybe a yard, but where that hole was between the tackle and guard a couple of plays ago, Kyle, it was not there this time for Dale and Anders. No, you're right. This time Wolverines is kind of in their full bore uh, goal line defense. Even had two or three linebackers there, and even a safety kind of ri- lined up right up on the center there for Q&D, so... You and he's going to have to maybe get a little creative, maybe even pop outside here if Vashon keeps piling up the um, 
you know, the, 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 the hole between both guards. Third and goal from the three-yard line for Q&D, already leading 7 nothing. Power eye, and they bring Arns in motion towards the near sideline. And they pitch it wide to Anders. Waits for a block, doesn't get one, but lowers his shoulder and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. A good patient run by yeah. Dalen Anders, and then good power at the end of it to get the ball across the goal line. Well, you're right. We talked about that uh, a little bit last week against Marquette. I mean, Anders, a little bit tougher to bring down physically this year, not just not just working on his speed, but he's bulked up a little bit, carrying a little bit more muscle. And you saw at that time, it looked like he might be taken down around the three or four yard line, but able to keep his legs moving, able to fall forward into the end zone, and Anders into the touchdown, in, into the end zone for the Raiders' second touchdown. Here's the snap. It's low, and Landon Hemming couldn't get the ball on the tee for Cooper Reese to try and attempt the kick, and poor Landon Hemming got crushed by about three Wolverines who knew what to do once they saw the ball on the ground next to the block. So the Raiders do not get the extra point attempt up in the air, and the Raiders lead it 13-0 with 4.06 left to go in the first quarter. Back in one minute here on WTAD. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Michael Libman, financial service representative with MetLife in Quincy. They still make house calls, even with the internet and email. I feel it's important to really get to know you and your family's needs. Otherwise, how will I know what direction you need to take? Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Lipman. He makes house calls. A loved one passes on, and for a moment, time seems to stand still. My husband was my whole world. We spent so much time together. Making funeral arrangements is never easy. We can help you create a ceremony with sensitivity, compassion, and respect. Hanson Spear Funeral Home, celebrating a life well lived. They've had the ball twice and scored twice. Bashan has had it once, got one first down, but then had to punt the ball away to QND. Here's Cooper Reese's kick, and it's a low line drive that backs up the return man who will drift back into the end zone, or darn near the end zone, but apparently didn't step in the end zone, and then fumbles the ball as he slipped, and it's recovered by the Raiders inside the 20-yard line. And if this were the NFL, they'd probably have a replay to see if his knee touched before the ball came out. Now a flag flies in the air. Carson Krasinski comes up with the ball. Not sure if it's on a John player who probably cursed because he lost the ball. But the fumble is recovered by QND, and then personal foul, unsportsmanlike conduct, called on QND. So apparently somebody from QND said something after the Raiders recovered the ball. So the Raiders recover the ball at the 19 of Bashan, but then will be backed up 15 yards to about the 34-yard line. But something Bashan could ill afford, Kyle, is to give the Raiders extra possessions, and they're going to do so right here on a play where the return man really didn't get hit. If he got hit, he just barely got touched, and he caught the ball up. Yeah, it didn't look like anything unusual, but, you know, we've seen here tonight, we've seen Dalen Anders with a good pick, uh, good kickoff return. We've seen a punt go for, call it a half a yard, and now we've seen a fumble on a kickoff return here for Bashan. So, you know, they're making the Raiders put together some plays on offense, you know, and, and, and not, you know, at least making the Raiders show some consistency offensively. But they just keep giving these short fields, and the Raiders are disciplined enough and, and uh, on offense to keep taking advantage. Out of the power eye, first and ten, give it to Logan Arns, and he steps through two tackles, keeps his balance, and leans forward inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. That'll be a gain of six, and that was that was the old tire drill for Logan Arns there. Yeah, I had an all-star drill as well there with the hand on the, uh, hand on the ground to keep yourself up. And, you know, again, Arns, uh, you know, it's going to take – Three or four guys, you know, the first the first guys just so rarely get uh, the two fullbacks for QND. It's fun to watch them work so hard. On second and four, ball on the far hash, and they give it to Blake Kiljenbrink, who powers his way up the middle, turns his back, and gets thrown forward to about the 20-yard line for a first down and a pickup of close to nine. Well, give Hilgenbrink a gain of eight on his first touch, and it gives the Raiders another first down. Raiders just kind of doing what they want here offensively on the ground. Brady Miller that time 10 yards downfield. Still pushing the guys out of the way there uh, for Blake Hildebrink's run. So just just so far, far more physical than Mashawn wants to be up front. 
3.10 left to go, first quarter. CUNY leading 13 0 as the ball at the Vashon 20 yard line. Ball in the far hash, power eye, single receiver split to the near side. Turn, give it to Anders. He wanted to bounce it outside, then made a quick, sharp cut inside. Picked up about seven yards, but then the referee throws a flag, and when he throws a flag on an offensive play, that's usually holding. Well, you know, Q&D here has probably got to feel a little bit, you know, you know with the, how Vashon's adjusted their defense. There's eight guys within about two yards of the line of scrimmage here. There is a receiver. There's a cornerback out on the receiver. There's a safety at about eight yards, and then there's a cornerback on the other side that's just a little bit outside the tackle of the tight end, and everyone else is. Uh, Everyone else could hear the quarterback whisper. They mark the penalty off from the line of scrimmage, so it's going to put the ball back at the 30 for QND and bring up first and close to 20 for the Raiders. Ball on the far hash at the Vashon 30-yard line. Power eye, single receiver near side. And Beverly's going to hand it off to Anders. Slips through one hand tackle, has five, has ten after splitting another tackle, and then lost the ball on contact, and they're going to call it a fumble, and Vashon has it inside the Wolverine 20 at around the 17-yard line. And that time, Anders ran through two tackles, Kyle, and just as he was going down, he got hit again. He says he was down, but, again, no replay here for high school football. So give Anders a gain of ten, and then the fumble, and Vashon recovers. Yeah, you know, Anders thought he was down, didn't didn't uh, argue too much about it, or didn't get, you know sound look too surprised about it. But I actually had uh, <laughs> taken my eyes off the ball there because I thought he was down as well. So you know, that time a good hustle to the ball there by Bashan. You know, again, that one more hit, that one that last tackle, able to knock the ball loose, and Bashan takes advantage. So the Wolverines take over on their own 18. They go to the spread, actually the pistol here with three receivers to the far side, single receiver near side. And the snap is a little high, but Dickens comes down with it. Now he's going to take off with it, and he's only going to get to about the 15-yard line, and a flag flies in from the referee again. But this time it was after the quarterback started his scramble, so you wonder if there was a face mask penalty here on QND. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too, given the timing yep. given the timing of that, uh, the time the flag was thrown. Nice job by Austin Tappy, kind of leading the charge there from QND on the defensive front, first one to get to Dickens. And it's a five-yard face mask penalty on QND. I didn't see the indication, but it's a five-yard penalty on the Raiders. And it puts the ball right back at the 18-yard line, so it's going to be first and 10 once again for Vashon. And that is four penalties in the first quarter on QND for 30 yards. Out of the pistol, two by two, the receivers, ball in the near hash. Dickens takes the snap, has a big hole to run through, so he takes off. And then the Raiders close that hole down, but Dickens is able to spin and get thrown forward for a gain of about five to the Vashon 23-yard line. It'll be second and five for the Wolverines. Well, I think if Vashon's going to have uh, much success in this pass game tonight, they're, they're going to have to start getting rid of the ball quicker. Dickens mm -hmm. is you know, out of the shotgun. He's going to have to do some one-step throwing out, one-step throw a slant or a fade or whatever it might be. Right now, Welper, Austin, Tappy, this Q&E defense front is putting too much pressure on him to do anything else. Second and five from their own 23 for Vashon. Ball on the near hash. Snap a little high again, but Dickens corrals it. And they run a tunnel screen to the outside to John Mitchell. And Austin Tabby goes out there and buries him at about the 16-yard nice line. Nice hustle from Austin Tabby. Comes from his defensive end position. They tried a quick pass, just like we talked about. A quick pass out to the left to a running back. Austin Tappy stops going out to the quarterback. Turns to his right. Runs parallel to the line of scrimmage. And just tattooed. Tattooed the uh, receiver, and, man, nice hustle play from Austin Tappy. Minus seven on the first pass play for the Wolverines. They are one for two passing for a negative seven yards. And brings up third and long, third and about 11 for the Wolverines. Ball in the far hash now, out of the pistol, empty backfield, four by one the receivers. Dickens takes the snap, immediately starts forward, eludes two Raider linemen, and then Oof. gets pounded by Logan Orange, just as it looked like Dickens oh. was going to fall forward. Orange really hit him with authority and pushed him back. Yeah, Tappy kind of held him up, it looked like. Tappy and Welper in there again, and then Arns just finishing the job. You could hear the uh, pads colliding from up here. Pickup of nine, but they needed 11, did Vashon. And who called timeout here? I think QND's calling a timeout here to make ah, Vashon punt against the wind. Yeah. It's 30 seconds left in the first quarter. 13 0 Raiders with 37 seconds left in the quarter. If the Raiders would have not called timeout. Vashon would have likely let the quarter expire and punt with the win as the first play of the second quarter. 
37 seconds left as Kyle mentioned in the first quarter. CUNY leading 13-0. Give it to Dalen Anders. He cut inside instead of outside, and he gets wrapped up for a gain of about two on what will probably be the final play of the first quarter. Hard to criticize Dalen Anders, Kyle, when he gets to that hole and he has a decision to make. Cut inside or cut outside, and it's a you know, split-second decision. He cut inside that time, and it just seemed from my vantage point the hole was to the outside. To the Okay, well, I was almost seeing something to the left oh, here. Oh, okay. So, yeah. He did cut <laughs> left, but... I, I thought well, I, I saw further left, I should say, than maybe. Wow, that's an interesting horn. A new horn with the new scoreboard. No longer the sirens here at Advanced Physical Therapy Field, but the Raiders will take over in the second quarter at the Vachon 26. Raiders lead at 13 0. Back with the second quarter in one minute here. It's coming to Quincy, and it's a game changer. Fiber is the fastest technology available, and Adams is bringing fiber to the home. Nothing else compares to fiber, and Adams will be connecting Quincy neighborhoods to this lightning-fast internet and telephone service with no gimmick pricing and local service. Find out how your neighborhood can become a fiberhood. Just take the quick survey at followthefiber.net. Adams, the better and now faster way to connect. Federated Insurance is a lot like the family businesses we help protect. For 105 years and counting, Federated has shared the common values that have served our clients well. Federated Insurance, it's our business to protect yours. Call Tony Reese in Quincy at 223-4623. The Raiders play here on Talk Radio 930 WTAD. First play of the second quarter is a handout to Parker Kinsel, and these officials do not have a quick whistle here tonight, Kyle Bramber. They let Parker Kinsel take that pile for a ride, and Kinsel takes it all the way to the 13-yard line for a gain of 12 and another first down for QND. You know, I think it was the right thing, too. That The pile kept moving forward. You know, sometimes uh, you'll see referees treat that differently if it looks like the runner is just kind of caught in a big pile of humanity. But uh, let him play, and Kinsel kept moving the pile forward. So on first and 10 from the 13, give it to Hilgenbrink. He bounces off one tackler, runs through a second, and again, the pile moves forward, and then Hilgenbrink is thrown to the ground at about the six for a gain of seven yards for Blake Hilgenbrink. Hilgenbrink now getting in on the action as well. Again, another two-way player, one of those physical two-way players, linebacker, fullback type here for Q&D. We've, we've, got, uh, we've got some good ones this year, and Hilgenbrink's won. Arns, Kinsel, Hilgenbrink. A lot of exchangeable parts there, interchangeable parts, I guess I should say. On second and short for the Raiders, just outside the Vachon five-yard line. A lot of dancing going on by the defensive line for Vachon, and the far side linesman throws his flag. We'll see if he got one of the Raider O linemen to move. Raiders are clapping, so apparently not. So a lot of tap dancing being done at the line of scrimmage by the guys in white and blue. And apparently somebody tapped their way into the neutral zone. So half the distance to the goal. Puts the ball at the three-yard line and gives the Raiders a first-and-goal situation. First penalty of the game on Vachon. Yeah, it must have been one of those uh, linebackers here kind of just showing blitz as they've gotten close to the goal line, and they're just trying to crowd the line of scrimmage. One of them, I guess, came a little too close. Ball in the near hash. First-and-goal QND out of the power eye. Vemberlo turns, gives it to Anders, and he'll sneak his way into the end zone for the touchdown. That was almost Anders lowering his head, Kyle, and just kind of using what limited eyesight he had to just avoid bodies and fall his way across the big white line there. Well, yeah, and, you know, the, certainly the offensive line kind of made it easy for him. And, uh, you know, winning the, certainly winning the line of scrimmage, pushing that Bashan defensive line back a little bit. You know, Anders or any of the running backs typically aren't, you know, no, 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 one, no one in white jerseys is laying a hand on them until they get two, three, four yards down the field. And that way Anders can just kind of duck on through there and, Stay mostly untouched there for a touchdown run until he jumped on the ground. Anders has his second touchdown of the night, both from three yards, and the Raiders are going to go for two here. Power icing a receiver near side. Send Kinsel in motion towards the near sideline. Rembler will turn, pitch it wide to Anders, and Anders should find the end zone, and he does. Get, got hit pretty good right at the goal line, yeah. but Anders was able to have enough momentum going that he absorbed the hit and fell sideways into the end zone for the two-point conversion. So the Raiders lead it now 21-0 with 10.53 left to go here in the second quarter. Yeah, and credit Anders for kind of welcoming that contact. The cornerback, 
for the Wolverines. It beat his blocker there. That was uh, Dalen Jones beat his blocker. He was closing in on Anders hard. There was some pressure from the inside, and Anders didn't try to put on the brakes and run the other way or change the directions at all. He, he saw that hole there, and I thought he could beat, he beat the contact to that spot. He did, and got the two-pointer. So Kimini leads it 21 nothing with 10.53 left to go in the second quarter, and it's a recipe for success, Kyle. Bottle up Bashan's offense, and then pound them at the line of scrimmage with your power eye, and Right now, that recipe is working to a 21-point lead. Yeah, and take advantage of good field position, which yep. the Raiders have gotten every time they touch the ball. So, uh, you know, it, the the Wolverines aren't exactly making Q and D have to march 70 yards, you know, and, and put mm -hmm. together 10, 12 plays without, you know, holding penalties or you know a couple offsides penalty that kind of right. thing. They're the short drives, and the Raiders have been able to capitalize three out of four times. Off the top of my head, I'm going to say the worst starting field position for QND offensively tonight has been the Vashon 39-yard line. I think it is. It goes on the opening kickoff. And with Vashon has had two punts for an average of two yards per punt, plus a turnover in there, that certainly helps. Ben Nord will get the ball kicked off this time, and what do we have? Offsides on QND. And they blow the play dead immediately. Different kicker, Ben Nord approaches the ball differently than Cooper Reese apparently for that kickoff cover team for QND. So a five yard walk off on the Raiders. And new kickoff rules, Kyle, you can't be more than five yards off the line of scrimmage from where the ball is okay. kicked. In fact, your heels cannot be, with the ball at the 35 now because of the five yard penalty, your heels cannot be on the 30 yard line. They have okay. to be inside the 30. I believe that was something that the NFL did a couple years ago or last year maybe even. I believe it was a, a, they trying to do it just yeah, to keep a kickoff safer, I believe, right. is the reason. Exactly. So here comes Ben Nord again, and this time he gets to kick away, and it's a low line drive kick that will be picked up at about the 17-yard line by Jonathan Durant. And Durant gets stuck, lost the ball on the hit, and it's recovered by QND at the 30-yard line. Kenso on the tackle. Boy, that was a stick. Yeah. Durant was just kind of dancing around, and he danced right into, well, Carson Barnahide, he's coming off like he had something to do with it. But regardless, Durant got stuck right in the ribs. The ball popped out, and the Raiders recovered. Maybe it was Vonderheide that recovered the ball after Kenso hit him. Yeah, Kenso dodged the block there at the last second, and then, Able to put his head right on the ball carrier, right on the ball there, knocked it loose, and perfect form tackle, got his arms around the carrier, and ball comes out. And again, Raiders take over the 30-yard line, the second Wolverine fumble on a kickoff return tonight. So first and 10 QND from the Vashon 30, power eye. Give it to one of the up men. It's Logan Arns. He has daylight. Bounces it to the outside with a stiff arm and gets inside to 15. They may call a face mask penalty on Logan Arns. Arns went with a stiff arm, got it up around the head area of the Vashon defender, was, yeah. and then the back judge threw the flag. So it's either a face mask on Arns for the stiff arm, or maybe the Vashon defender responded with a face mask of his own. It's a face mask on oh. Vashon. And yeah, they're going to say, yeah, okay. So yeah, a Brandon personal Jones. foul face mask. So Arns picks up 15 on the carry, plus half the distance to the goal. We'll take... The ball to about the seven and a half yard line, first and goal QND. I call that on Brandon Jones, the senior captain. And if I'm Brandon Jones, I, I think I'd say he got me first. He started it. His <laughs> arm certainly did. Boy, there's the voice of experience from a lot of backyard battles. He started it. <laughs> first and goal Raiders from about the seven and a half yard line. Power eye. Vemberlo turns, gives it to Arns again. And he submarines his way to about the one yard line. Boy, the Raiders fullbacks, Kyle, all of them tonight. Kinsel, Hilgenbrink, and Arns doing a great job of being patient and then bursting after that initial uh, two yards after the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Pickup of about six there for Arns. No, you're right. You, you typically don't see that out of a fullback. You, you know, you might see more size typically out of a fullback. Right. But you're right. You know, that quick hitter just kind of straight up the field. On second and goal from just outside the one. Give it back to Arns. He's hit. He's hit. And touchdown. QND is the far side linesman. Raises his hands. Oh, I guess Arns actually made it through that pile at the goal line because he was about four yards deep when he was being celebrated by his teammates. So 
Mr. Fantasy Football, Logan Arns, to scores again. <laughs> he had two touchdowns last week and has two tonight. So four touchdowns for the Raiders in this game and for Logan Arns. 27-0, the Raiders lead it with 9.45 left to go in the, fir in the first half. We'll get another short field there for Q&D. Uh, short drive and courtesy of Logan Arns. Another score for the Raiders. Kick is up and looks good. Ben Nord with the extra point attempt, and it is good. So the Raiders lead it 28 0 with 9.45 left to go in the first half. Back in 30 seconds here on WTA In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Michael Libman, financial service representative with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls, even with the internet and email. I feel it's important to really get to know you and your family's needs. Otherwise, how will I know what direction you need to take? Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Lipman. He makes house calls.
And Kyle, talking to Coach Cannell this morning, he said in week one, when Vashon played Cape Girardeau Central, who mm-hmm. made it to the semifinals last year in Missouri, losing to Webb City, and everybody loses to Webb everybody City, including loses. Jeff City, Hawaii. I think they gave the Chiefs a tough game. He said that Bashan against Cape Girardeau Central looked like an unbelievably good team. He said the coaches were touching each other because they were all watching. I guess they all make copies of the of the DVDs for all the coaches, and they're all watching it individually and texting each other. Are you seeing this? Holy, okay. why did we schedule these guys? And apparently two weeks later they get the tape of Bashan and they went, is this the same team? Really? Okay. So uh, who knows what happened from that uh, third Saturday in August to hear the what second Saturday in September a lot has changed for the Vashon Wolverines their product on the field anyway all right they that, that first game against Cape Girardeau Central a 44 34 loss for Vashon uh so I mean not not just not just close but I mean both teams going up and down the field yeah. and, and offensive being real productive and not as much tonight so after the Vashon timeout, first and 10 QND, Kinsel comes in motion out of the power wire, leaving an eye backfield. Hindlerson brings the up back, give it to Anders. He stops, starts, goes forward, gets lifted up off his feet, and then bounces off that tackle and is down to around the 11 yard line. How in the world did Dalen wow. Anders do that? Whew, three or four guys on him. Man, Dalen Anders is keeping those legs moving. Certainly a speed guy and has made his name as a tailback in this area because of his speed, but that time showing off the strength too. This time, Vashon defensively, there was nine guys within about three yards in line of scrimmage. Well, why not? Now, certainly the Raiders don't need to at this point, but I think this would be an excellent opportunity here to uh, throw throw the ball up in the air, pass a little bit, try to get Max Enverlo a little bit of confidence in this passing game, even to show Illini West, who plays the Raiders next week, um, you know, give them an idea that you, you know, you, you've got to play a little bit more honest. You can't just pack nine guys in the box and be, let's be okay with it. Second and five, four Q&E. They gave Anders five yards down to the 12-yard line. They pitch it wide to Dale and Anders. And Hildjabrink missed his block, but Anders cut behind the defender anyway and got to about the eight-yard line. Hildjabrink was supposed to be the lead blocker, and he overran his block, if you will, so that defender cut behind Hildjabrink's shoulder and had Anders dead to rice. But Anders saw him coming the whole way and just kind of went, whoop, and stepped around him and picked up four or five yards to make it, give him a gain of four, Dale and Anders, to bring up third and one for Q&A. Well, you're right. Hil- Hilgenbrink wasn't able to get, uh, get a body there on Dante West, the number 18. I mean, there's so many guys <laughs> crowding the box for the Wolverines. It's it's kind of hard to pick out who, exactly who you want to go after. Just there's so many white jerseys loading the line of scrimmage. On third and short for the Raiders, they give it to Anderson. He has a kickwalk to the end zone. Touchdown QND as they ran left that time and a huge hole between the tackle and the wide receiver on the far side. And Anders has his third touchdown of the evening. This time from about seven yards out, and the Raiders have a 34-0 lead, and we still have half the second quarter to play. Yeah, that time no one getting a hand on Anders until he got to the goal line, got spun around there, but uh, pretty easy doing there off the left-hand side. Third straight, actually that's, you know, okay, three touchdowns for Anders, two for Orange. Snap back ball down, the kick by Nord is up, and it looks good from here, and it is. CUNY leads at 35-0. We still have 7.04 left to go in the th- Second quarter, back in 30 seconds. This is Raider football on WTAD. It's coming to Quincy, and it's a game changer. Fiber is the fastest technology available, and Adams is bringing fiber to the home. Nothing else compares to fiber, and Adams will be connecting Quincy neighborhoods to this lightning-fast internet and telephone service with no gimmick pricing and local service. Find out how your neighborhood can become a fiber hood. Just take the quick survey at followthefiber.net. Adams, the better and now faster way to connect. Federated Insurance is a lot like the family businesses we help protect. For 105 years and counting, Federated has shared the common values that have served our clients well. Federated Insurance, it's our business to protect yours. Call Tony Reese and Quincy at 223-4623. Probably not all that... Uh, impressive just because they haven't, um, you know, they haven't needed to. You know, offense doing a nice job in the inside run, playing real physical here. Uh, but you're right, Sean hasn't, hasn't helped themselves one bit, especially with those special teams. 165 for QND, 32 for Vishon. Ask and you shall receive, Kyle. 
Here's the kick. It's another low bouncing kick picked up by Lewis. He started one way, made one man miss, and now has a lane down the far sideline, but is grabbed from behind. But Lewis is able to drag Carper, Grant Carper for QND, who made the hit from behind, but Lewis was able to drag Carper about three yards. So Vashon, with a very good punt or kickoff return that time, takes the ball to about the 37 yard line of their own 37, I should say. And Vashon has their best starting field position of the night. Yeah, good hustle there from Ben Nord. You know, gets shot at kicking at this time uh, on the special teams as well. His first guy down, just not able to break down and make the tackle. Credit Carper as well for good hustle from behind, mm-hmm. having to come all the way from behind and really turn on the Jets to catch uh, to catch the ball carrier. Charvez Lewis that time with the return. Now out of the pistol. Four by one, the receivers for the near side. Dickens takes the snap. Wanted to take it up the middle. Can't now backs up, fires, and it's incomplete at the feet of two Raider defenders. Logan Arns was there along with Parker Kinsel. And Austin Tappy was lurking. Yeah, so Dickens true. that time wanted to take it wide, Kyle, and there was nothing there, so he just backed up and threw it into the ground. Yeah, probably not the best decision. Was trying to get the ball to Markavian Darrow, um, but then when he threw it, it was kind of stepping away from the pass, did not step into it at all, so it was a real weak pass. Didn't make it to Darrow and, and almost gave up the interception. Second and 10 for Bashan from their own 37. Ball in the far hash. Empty backfield, four by one the receivers, four to the near side. Dickens takes the snap. Wanted to throw it quickly here to the outside and almost fumbled the snap. Now he's wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage and buried by three Raiders. Ben Welper again in on the play. Parker Kinsel saw an opportunity to hit somebody, so he came flying up. And Dickens loses about four yards on the play, put the ball at the 33 of Ashan. It's going to be third and 14. Diggins is a pretty good athlete. You know, mm-hmm. I, I'd almost wonder if they want to try some quarterback sweeps, just straight quarterback sweeps with him and just try to put him in some sort of space. It's just all night long he's had Welper right in his face, almost right from the get-go. Well, he took that snap, Kyle, and you could tell he wanted to almost, well, what he tried to do was catch and throw all in the same motion, and he fumbled the snap so he didn't throw it, which was a good decision. On second and 14, or third and 14, Diggins takes the snap. The ball is tipped, I believe, by Logan Arns and falls incomplete, trying to hit Markevian Darrow on a post pattern, uh-huh. and... I think the ball got to Darrow. It did? Yeah, I think so. And I saw Arns leave his feet. It might have got tipped before it got to him, but Darrow was able to get his hands on it anyway and just not able to come down with the catch. So, you know, good-looking play on a post pattern there from Darrow. Just uh, couldn't haul it in. I think the ball may have been tipped to help cause that. Well, I saw Arns was right in the path of the ball, and I figured he was going to get a hand on it, and then I lost where the ball went, and then I saw two Wolverines kind of fly on their back hitting their head like, oh, I can't believe that just happened. So, once again, it's time to witness this Vashon punting game. Three punts, six yards here tonight. Nelson stands at about his own 21. Gets a nice Nice. high kick away. Anders will get out of its way, and it will bounce 15 yards past him, make that 20 yards past him, and will roll all the way to the QND 15-yard line. So... By almost a full torso, Kyle Vemberlo is the worst f- starting field position for QND as that makes up for, well, it's going to help the punting average immensely. Yeah, I think that was about a 54-yarder if I uh, caught the markers right right before he took off. From the 28, so that's 22 to midfield. That's a 57-yard punt. Okay. So. From 20, okay. So 63 yards on four kicks boosted to at least almost 21 yards per punt. Does that win? It's the win I brought up before. Well, he that, got that, it airborne. You know, that that was a nice kick. The punter got it airborne, and with the wind blowing the way it is, right at his back for Nelson, he kicked it a long way. Now we have another stoppage in play, and I'm not sure why. Somebody called timeout. Let's see who it was. Timeout, Vashon again. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. q and leads at 35 nothing. 5.50 left to go second quarter. Raider football on WTAD. Hey, check out that. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Michael Libman, financial service representative with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls, even with the internet and email. I feel it's important to really get to know you and your family's needs. Otherwise, how will I know what direction you need to take? Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Lipman. He makes house calls. Thirty-five, nothing. Tim and Kyle with you on a cool. I was trying to think of the right adjective to use. It's not cold. It's cool. Cool and crisp. Yeah. Good football weather. And stay dry. That helps you keep a little bit warmer here. Sometimes that 
That cold, wet rain can be the worst, but so far so good. So the Raiders with their worst starting field position of the night at their own 15-yard line, first and 10 for the blue and gold. Power icing receiver far side, ball in the far hash. Max Vimberlow takes, they run the counter. And slipping through was Dale and Anders. Anderson. Boy, when Anders took the handoff, I didn't think he was in the backfield, but it was Dale and Anders. And he got back to the line of scrimmage, but got no further. So good defense by Vashon. Brings up a second and 10 for QND. That time again, you see nine guys or so in the box from Bashan and able to bottle up that counter. Sometimes that counter, you know, it's a slower developing play. Offensive guard, offensive tackle all come all the way around, and sometimes it can really get plugged up there, uh, you know, if a team's plug in the box like Bashan is right now. Power eye on second and 10 for Q&D. Ball closer to the middle of the field. Raiders turn. They give it to one of the up men. It's Arns. He keeps nice. his balance and rumbles forward and gets a first down past the 25-yard line to about the 26. Arns got hit as he got to the line of scrimmage, but did a great job mm -hmm. to put that right hand down, maintain his balance, and rumble forward for a gain of 11. Yeah, a terrific job by it there by Arns. Raiders would be looking about a third and eight if he hadn't been able to keep himself up, but uh, kept off the ground, used that hand to stay off the ground, and, and you know, again, Always keeping his shoulders downfield, not guessing around too much, just uh, keeping those shoulders focused forward downfield. And a nice pick, first down pickup. Actually, to put the ball at the 27 and give it to Anders. He bounces off the blitzer and is able to get forward, and then got a late hit, yeah, but they're did. not going to call. Yeah, Darius Lewis. Anders was laying on the ground, and Darius Lewis, you could count it 1,000, 1,002, and then Lewis lowered his shoulder and bounced on him, but. A short game for Anders of about two yards. No penalty called. It'll be second and eight for QND. Good here for QND. I you know, wonder if they'll try to just throw one or two times here in the air. Just try to take advantage of this uh, packed up defense. There's no need to. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But then again, I, I, I agree with you that at some point you've got to keep the teams that are going to watch you on film honest. Give it to a fullback again. I believe that's Arns again, and it was Logan Arns, who gets across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Short gain of about three is going to bring up about third and five for QND. They'll put the ball down at about the 33-yard line. So Arns actually got about four yards on the play. Arns has 46 yards on eight attempts. Kinsel has 53 yards on seven attempts. Anders has 64 yards on 13 attempts. And then Hilgerbrink has touched it twice for 15 yards. 3.30 left to go, second quarter. QD leading 35 0, faced with a third and a short five or a long four. Single back is Anders. They run a counter, give it to him up the middle. He skitters, he stops, and he plows forward for the first down to about the 39 yard line. Very patient run by Dale and Anders, give him the 38, so that's a gain of five and a first down. In the time that Raiders go to the one back set, two tight end, one uh, single back set go to the counter. They did a couple times last week, too, against Marquette. They're trying to spread out that defense a little bit more when they go to that counter and maybe not be as predictable uh, as they would be if it was just a one tight end set. Jonathan Horak split to the near side. Jordan Over split to the far side. That double tight end, single back set for QND. Give it to Anders, and he will try and bounce it to the outside, and he slips through about four tackles and will finally be brought down past the 40-yard line, and they're going to give Dalen Anders close to the 44, which would be a hard-earned five yards for Dalen Anders, especially when he got hit pretty much when he took the handoff. Yeah, that time Anders again in the single back set. It was a quick trap play, would be pretty much right up the middle. Typically, Raiders would run that play to a fullback and, and you know hope he gets three or four or five tough-earned yards. That time put the shiftier, faster Anders back there and uh, he's able to get past that first tackler and get his shoulders back upfield. Second and a short five for QND. They go power eye to the Raiders. And they give it to Anders again. He waits for his blocks. Now makes a couple of moves and gets the ball into Vashon territory at about the 49. First and 10 QND. And Anders picks up about seven more. Goes right across that big, beautiful Quince Notre Dame logo. <laughs> Midfield here at Advanced Physical Therapy Field. It's looking absolutely sharp. 2.12 left to go in this first half. QND has two timeouts left. Has the first down on the Vashon 49. Give it to... Hildenbrink, I believe, that time. He gets to the Vashon 43. And it's a gain of about six. And Vashon calls timeout. Vashon calls timeout. 
Okay. With under two minutes to go in the first half. Hilgenbrink picks up six. He has 21 yards on three carries. Nice when your fullback's averaging seven yards per pop. It is. So Vashon is out of timeouts. QD has two more timeouts. And the Raiders lead at 35 0. If the Raiders can punch this in, get points on this possession, a touchdown on this possession, Kyle, we will have a running clock the second half. I believe we're in Missouri. We already would. Is that correct? 35? Uh, believe, we would be guaranteed, I believe, a running clock in the second half. That's how it works. Okay. I think in Missouri, it's 35 points. It was Sharon Lewis from his linebacker spot there. The sophomore was the first one to get to arms on that play. Raiders, Raiders now go to the Notre Dame offense. Two by two out of the spread. Inside give, though, to Anders. He patiently waits, makes a cut, and he'll be brought down short of the first down at about the 40 or 41. And it'll be fourth and a yard for QND, and they're already at the line of scrimmage wanting to go. And they're waiting for the pile to right itself. And somebody for Vashon was sitting on his wallet, which makes things go even slower. So it's fourth and one for QND just outside the Vashon 40. They're going to go wide to Dalen Anders. He has room to run. He has the first down. He's inside the 35, inside the 30, and will be brought down at about the 26 yard line with 45 seconds left to go in the first half. Give Dalen Anders a gain of about 14 yards. Dalen Anders takes it to the Vashon 26, first and 10 QND. Yeah, and credit Jacob Mayfield from his uh, wide receiver position with some good blocking out there. He's 6'3", 190 pound sophomore. Big body, did some nice blocking there to help uh, pay the sideline clear there for Dalen Anders. Anders was tackled out of bounds, so the clock will not move here as the play is blown in. First and 10 QND from the Vashon 26 yard line. Remberlow steps back, gives it to one of the up men, Hilgenbrink, and he's ankle tackled just as he crosses to 25, gets to a 23 timeout called by QND. It'll be a three yard gain for Blake Hilgenbrink, and a timeout called by the Raiders, their second. Raiders here are going to have to treat these timeouts very carefully here. It looks clear that they're preferring to try to keep this on the ground here. With only 40 seconds to go, so I put the ball in the air tonight. So they'll have to uh, use a timeout wisely here and certainly tell Dalen Anders on your outside carries, once you're about to get tackled, that sideline is your friend. Get out of bounds. Stop that clock. 39 and a half seconds left to go. Second quarter, q &E leading 35 nothing. And again, if the Raiders can get this ball across the goal line, we will have a running clock for the entire second half. Raiders started this drive on their own 15. They have it now at the Vashon 23. So Raiders look, look good in that regard here on this drive, Tom. Yeah, they able to stream some plays together, picked up that fourth down. Uh, Vashon flying around a bit, little better here uh, defensively. Coach Obert here sending in the play with the Raiders offense. We'll see if they – looks like he might have called in two straight plays. I could also see you know Raiders potentially here – running a sweep to the right to stay close to that sideline so Anders can get out of bounds if needed. Anything to the left, he's going to run up to all the way across the field. The ball set up here on the right hash. Second at about seven for QND. And Vashon jumps into the neutral zone again. The left defensive tackle jumped into the neutral zone. I think that was Darius Lewis that poked his nose into the neutral zone and Unlike the NFL, Kyle, once you stick your nose in there, you can't drift back and All have right. nothing called. In high school, if you break that imaginary plane of where the play starts, that's a five-yard penalty, and that's what was called there on Darius Lewis. So well, what was second and about seven for Q&D is now second and two. Ball in the, on the near hash. Arms goes in motion. And Beverly's going to throw. Stands, fires, complete to Ben Wepper, who keeps his feet and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Pass was a little behind Wupper, but he made the adjustment to make the catch. And it's the first touchdown pass of the season for QND. And it's a an 18-yarder from Max Venverlo to Ben Wupper. Well, nice job there from Max Venverlo. And congratulations to Venverlo there and Wupper on the first touchdown pass of the season. You're right. That time the Raiders went to a pop pass, faked a sweep to the left, got, uh, got the linebackers and safety flowing that way, hit Wupper, lined up as the tight end on the right-hand side. Hit him right in stride, and Welper able to take it in the end zone. Snap back ball down. The extra point attempt is up, and it looks good, and it is. Ben Nord showed a lot of poise there. He had a Vashon player flying right at him, but Nord kicked it between the uprights, and the q &E Raiders lead it 42 nothing here with 39 seconds left to go in this first half, and that means we'll have a running clock here for the entire second half. But 
a nice adjustment made by Ben Wolper, Kyle, uh-huh. to catch that pass that was a little behind him. And then he got popped after he got the ball about two yards across the goal line. He got popped. The ball flew loose, but he was already across the plane for the touchdown for QND. Yeah, real nice job. You're right. Had to throw his hips back a little bit to uh, to get both hands on it and able to charge back upfield and cross that goal line. It's got to it's got to feel good for the big tight end, causing lots of ruckus here so far this season defensively, mostly from his defensive end spot, but this time involved in the offensive uh, offensive part of the game, other than just blocking and. You know, he's even made your coveted stat line, your stat book. So hey, he had the always... first touchdown of the season for QND. Well, that's true. Defensive that's true. interception. Yeah. Getting involved here offensively. So nice job there by Ben Verlo and Welper. You know, again, it, it doesn't sound like, you know, it, you know, one pass a game, whatever it might be, but, you know, it's just trying to keep that defensive team, you know, other opposing defenses honest this mm-hmm. season is going to be a big chore for QND. And you don't necessarily have to complete ten passes, but you got to make them think you can. Right, You know, and, and you can pick up a third and eight through the air if you need to. Cooper Reese with another line drive, one hopper that is corralled by the return man, and he brings it up the middle of the field, bounces off one tackle, splits two other defenders, slips a jersey tackle, but then Cooper Reese comes Cooper up Reese. and just manhandles him, and then a flag flies in from one of the near side officials right towards the pile as Cooper Reese said enough's All enough. Right. Went up and bear hugged the Michon defender and threw him down, or the Michon ball carrier, I should say. I think that was Darrow again. They're going to call a face mask penalty on QND. They wouldn't call it on Cooper Reese. At first, I thought they were going to call a late hit that was just a few yards down the field. But great field position for Vashon here. The five-yard penalty puts the ball at the QND 45. Second five-yard face mask penalty on QND tonight. Vashon has one personal foul face mask penalty that was half the distance to the goal. 42-0, QND leads. Vashon has an empty backfield. Four receivers split to the far side. Single receiver near side, ball in the near hash. Clifton Dickens wants to get rid of the ball, and he short hops his receiver, Brandon Jones, incomplete. Dickens had it back there for a long time, Kyle, trying to find a receiver, got a little antsy, and then just threw it at Jones' ankles. Well, and I'm surprised they didn't go to the right there. It looked like the Raiders were really outflanked. The, the Wolverines had four receivers to the right. Kensel came out there um, from his linebacker spot to, you know, not to get too out leverage, but really, you know, there's Copley out there as well from his cornerback spot. 21 seconds left in the first half. Second and 10 for Vashon from the QE 45. Blitz up the middle. Dickens trying to get around it, and he does down the near sideline. Steps inside Tappy. Now bounces to the sideline, has the first down and more, and Frieden will escort him out of bounds along with Vonderheide. But a good positive play by Dickens on the scramble, and he takes it from the Raider 45 inside the 30. And we'll see where they spot the ball. It looks like they're going to put it at the 27. So a 19-yard scramble by Clifton Dickens. Yeah, and Dickens kind of has it figured out that, he, you know, if he doesn't throw that ball by the time he counts to one, it's time to start <laughs> running. I mean, that, that time it was Arns uh, on a blitz right at the middle and timed it perfectly, and Dickens just had no chance. Q&E calls a timeout. Their third and final timeout of this first half. 42 nothing. Q&E leads. 11 and a half seconds left to go in this first half, and Vashon has it first and 10 at the QND 27. Actually, the 28, excuse me. I'm not used to having hash marks. Not only down the middle of the field, but on the sidelines as well. Sideline, I know. It happens maybe once a year. When QND was able to see field turf, like at Jeff City. I'll get spoiled if I have hash marks you five wrote, times I know. Ago. You're going to be so grumpy when <laughs> the next time we don't have hash marks. <laughs> going to actually have to figure out how between the five-yard uh, lines where the ball is. That's always West, painful. I believe West Hancock's the next real yeah, game for the that's what I was we'll, have, we'll have to call ahead. Bring extra spray, uh, spray paint. So after the Q&A timeout, it's first and ten for the Wolverines, and the snap goes over to quarterback's head. Dickens... Thought he was going to get on it, but he didn't. The Raiders recover. Welper. Ben Welper saw Dickens get back to the ball, but then Dickens overran it, and then Welper was able to jump on it. So Vashon fumbles it away. A bad snap goes over the quarterback's head in the spread offense, and QND recovers at their own 44. First and 10, QND, and with four seconds left to go in this half, I would imagine QND will just take a knee. 
think so. Venverlo gets the uh, troops organized. Dale and Anders is the deep man, and Venverlo does just that. 42 0. QND leads Bashan at the half. We'll take a three minute timeout. Raiders leading 42 0 over Bashan. This is Raider football on WTAD. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Michael Libman, financial service representative with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls, even with the internet and email. I feel it's important to really get to know you and your family's needs. Otherwise, how will I know what direction you need to take? Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Lipman. He makes house calls. A loved one passes on, and for a moment, time seems to stand still. My husband was my whole world. We spent so much time together. Making funeral arrangements is never easy. We can help you create a ceremony with sensitivity, compassion, and respect. Hanson Spear Funeral Home, celebrating a life well lived. It's coming to Quincy, and it's a game changer. Fiber is the fastest technology available, and Adams is bringing fiber to the home. Nothing else compares to fiber, and Adams will be connecting Quincy neighborhoods to this lightning-fast internet and telephone service with no gimmick pricing and local service. Find out how your neighborhood can become a fiber hood. Just take the quick survey at followthefiber.net. Adams, the better and now faster way to connect. Federated Insurance is a lot like the family businesses we help protect. For 105 years and counting, Federated has shared the common values that have served our clients well. Federated Insurance, it's our business to protect yours. Call Tony Reese and Quincy at 223-4623. Around here, people matter, and relationships are built on trust. That's the way it is at Town & Country Bank. Real people who like things simple, honest, and done right. And our roots are right here, so we're truly local. If you already do business with us, then you know how good banking can be. And if you're not, well, maybe you should. Town & Country Bank, you'll like how we do business. Part of the HNB Bank family. Your State Farm agent, Charles Schultz, can help get you to a better state. From cost to coverage, Charles can develop a plan just for you. This is Charles Schultz. Call me at 224-6665. Or drop by my office next to County Market at 48th and Broadway. And together, we'll review your insurance needs.
In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Michael Libman, financial service representative with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls, even with the internet and email. I feel it's important to really get to know you and your family's needs. Otherwise, how will I know what direction you need to take? Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Lipman. He makes house calls. A loved one passes on, and for a moment, time seems to stand still. My husband was my whole world. We spent so much time together. Making funeral arrangements is never easy. We can help you create a ceremony with sensitivity, compassion, and respect. Hanson Spear Funeral Home, celebrating a life well lived. It's coming to Quincy, and it's a game changer. Fiber is the fastest technology available, and Adams is bringing fiber to the home. Nothing else compares to fiber, and Adams will be connecting Quincy neighborhoods to this lightning-fast internet and telephone service with no gimmick pricing and local service. Find out how your neighborhood can become a fiber hood. Just take the quick survey at followthefiber.net. Adams, the better and now faster way to connect. Federated Insurance is a lot like the family businesses we help protect. For 105 years and counting, Federated has shared the common values that have served our clients well. Federated Insurance, it's our business to protect yours. Call Tony Reese in Quincy at 223-4623. Around here, people matter, and relationships are built on trust. That's the way it is at Town & Country Bank. Real people who like things simple, honest, and done right. And our roots are right here, so we're truly local. If you already do business with us, then you know how good banking can be. And if you're not, well, maybe you should. Town & Country Bank, you'll like how we do business. Part of the HNB Bank family. Your State Farm agent, Charles Schultz, can help get you to a better state. From cost to coverage, Charles can develop a plan just for you. This is Charles Schultz. Call me at 224-6665. Or drop by my office next to County Market at 48th and Broadway. And together, we'll review your insurance needs.
Monmouth. Roseville. They go up to Monmouth. Of course, I'm drawing a blank too now that you <laughs> asked me. Uh, it's West, on the road was Hancock, like you said, Macomb, and give me one minute. Well, of course, is it we, in the program? Of course, we. Uh, there should be a schedule. In the I can't think of who the other. Oh well. Kearney oh, leads at 42 nothing. Tell you what, we'll take a break so we don't sound as stupid. We already are stupid because <laughs> we can't think of that last conference team. But yeah. uh, we'll Our apologies, by the way, to the conference team. We'll take a two-minute break here and come back, and we'll try and remember. Modern day. we got modern day. Oh, that's the other one. That's right. Yeah, okay. so we're sitting here thinking right. about area teams, and it's not the case. All right, that's right. One of the conference teams left, so there's only five conference games this year. So Breeze Modern Day will come here. And you right. told me, what, a couple weeks ago that Modern Day's putting in a a field turf as well. Is what yeah, I think that was the plan for them this year. I Hopefully it's going better for them than it has for Monroe, but uh, that's how I understand they're doing the same thing down in Breeze. And the first thing we thought of was that playoff game four years ago when it was a nice, beautiful Saturday afternoon, but dusty Dust as all get out. Yeah, it was. That was a good good day to scrape an elbow for the players. <laughs> it's a good day for QND as they played probably their best game of the season that year and then got a chance to play Rochester here at home the next week in the playoffs. 42 nothing QND leads Vashon here at halftime. Back with the second half in two minutes. This is Raider Football on WTA. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Michael Libman, financial service representative with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls, even with the internet and email. I feel it's important to really get to know you and your family's needs. Otherwise, how will I know what direction you need to take? Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Lipton. He makes house calls. A loved one passes on, and for a moment, time seems to stand still. My husband was my whole world. We spent so much time together. Making funeral arrangements is never easy. We can help you create a ceremony with sensitivity, compassion, and respect. Hanson Spear Funeral Home, celebrating a life well lived. It's coming to Quincy, and it's a game changer. Fiber is the fastest technology available, and Adams is bringing fiber to the home. Nothing else compares to fiber, and Adams will be connecting Quincy neighborhoods to this lightning-fast internet and telephone service with no gimmick pricing and local service. Find out how your neighborhood can become a fiberhood. Just take the quick survey at followthefiber.net. Adams, the better and now faster way to connect. Federated Insurance is a lot like the family businesses we help protect. For 105 years and counting, Federated has shared the common values that have served our clients well. Federated Insurance, it's our business to protect yours. Call Tony Reese and Quincy. Around here, people matter, and relationships are built on trust. That's the way it is at Town & Country Bank. Real people who like things simple, honest, and done right. And our roots are right here, so we're truly local. If you already do business with us, then you know how good banking can be. And if you're not, well, maybe you should. Town & Country Bank, you'll like how we do business. Part of the HNB Bank family. Your State Farm agent, Charles Schultz, can help get you to a better state. From cost to coverage, Charles can develop a plan just for you. This is Charles Schultz. Call me at 224-6665. Or drop by my office next to County Market at 48th and Broadway. And together, we'll review your insurance needs.
a game I would love to watch. I would pay money to see that game. You're pretty, you went on your money pretty tightly, too. That's saying, <laughs> that's saying a lot. That wallet has cobwebs in it. So that is saying quite Well, you know, not all of us can be the uh, higher, higher, the 1%, I guess, is the point. <laughs> oh, yeah. like, like Kyle Vemberlin. Yeah. So. I was trying to think of a more grandiose way to put it, but I decided that was the best way to go was 1%. Hey, we're going to start the second half, and people at home are actually saying, thank goodness we don't have to listen to these idiots prattle <laughs> on. That's what you try and do, folks, when it's a 42 nothing game. you got to think of things to talk about. Cooper Reese has it on the tee, as the Raiders will be defending the north goal here. And as everybody gets back into place on both sidelines, Reese has it. And in the air, and it's a deep angle kick that will sail into the end zone for a touchback. Boy, Cooper Reese did not yeah. much put did not put much effort into that kick, and it landed to the one yard line. Well, you know the other thing about Reese's kicking style is those, it's one thing to kick it straight away and get it to the goal line. Not that I could ever do it. Not to make it sound easy because it's not it's not easy. Uh, but he, he he usually has his ball land right about the numbers at the goal mm -hmm. line. So. Mm -hmm. That, that's even harder. It's tougher. It puts your kickoff team in better position. And, and last night, Kyle, I saw a uh, highlight of the Q&D soccer game against Quincy High, and Cooper Reese had a restart. And from what I saw online, it was about a 40-yard restart. And he used the exact same kicking motion. He just calmly approached the ball, and he hit it pretty much right on goal from 40 yards out. So he's got that kind of leg. Here's a give. Up the middle on the spread that's bounced to the outside and positive yards gained by the running back. And this is kind of how Vashon started the game, Kyle, with right. three pretty good runs. And this time it was, which Lewis was it, 21 Lewis or 22 Lewis? It was 21 Chavez. Levis, yeah. yeah. Chavez Lewis picked up 15 yards on the play, give him 16 on the play for a first down. Yeah, you're right. I think they might have run the same exact play, actually, to start the game. Kind of a quick give uh, off to the left-hand side. That time Lewis got the corner turned, and a uh, nice pick up there for the Wolverines offensively. Lewis has 26 yards, or excuse me, 36 yards on four carries. Now Clifton Dickens takes the snap, fires to the outside, and it's tipped in the air and intercepted. Jordan Obert has the pick after he hit Brandon Jones' hand, and Jordan Obert will take it to the house. About a 40-yard interception return, but there's a flag down on the play. Flag... Lies at about the 43-yard line of Vashon, so we'll see if they call interference here. There was inside coverage on Brandon Jones. The pass hit him in the hand and got tipped in the air, and then Jordan Obert corralled it and took it down the near sideline for an interception return for a touchdown, but I think the play's coming back from the we'll way the it. officials are reacting. Yeah. Credit Landon Peters with some nice coverage. Landon Peters able to get underneath the receiver, tip the ball up in the air, and then Obert did a nice job closing in on it. Oh, it's on Vashon. It's just that the official had to come back. They're waving out the flag. So, so the flag. because okay. the pass was tipped, they n negate the pass interference penalty. So Jordan Obert gets the long interception return for the touchdown. And I'm not sure how long that was. Play started at about the 36. 36 so about a 45-yard return. Yeah, I think so. Say? I think so. Then an interception on the second play after the second half kickoff. And Jordan Obert takes it to the house. Now Connor Daniel will attempt the extra point. Snap back ball down. The kick is up, and it's good. So the third different kicker for QND has converted an extra point here this evening. With the running clock, we have under 10 minutes to play here in the third quarter, and QND leads it now 49-0. Back in 30 seconds here on WTAD. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Michael Libman, financial service representative with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls, even with the internet and email. I feel it's important to really get to know you and your family's needs. Otherwise, how will I know what direction you need to take? Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Lipman. He makes house calls. A loved one passed. The high school, Jordan Obert with about a 45-yard interception return for a touchdown. And the Raiders lead it by the score of 49-0. Good defense by the Raiders there, Kyle, especially after a 16-yard pickup on a first down run by Charvez Lewis. 
The Raiders defend the pass well, get the ball up in the air, and then Jordan Obert did the rest. Cooper Reese again will kick it off, and he'll pound it into the end zone about a yard deep. It went over the head of Charvez Lewis, went uh, through the end zone into the soccer net. So it'll be a touchback, first and 10 for Vashon from their own 20-yard line. Well, I think Jordan Obert heard you mention uh, Piatone there <laughs> a few minutes ago and got him fired up. Kind of a and coming out party of sorts for Jordan Obert last year in the second round of the playoffs with a couple uh, passes defended. And Anything I can do to help, Kyle. Yeah, you did it there. And by the way, give your wife an extra kiss tonight for bringing me a bottle of water. Will do. Okay, now that I have something down my throat. Spread offense, ball in the middle of the field. Four of a Sean, trailing 49 nothing. Two by two, the receivers. Clifton Dickens takes the snap inside, give. And the running back makes two Raiders miss and then uh, loses about a yard. Boy, he did a lot of work there talking about the running back to lose one yard on that run. Yeah, no kidding. Chavez <laughs> Lewis, the ball carrier. And for all his efforts there, Lewis gets uh, gets drilled from both Blake Hildenbrink and Austin Tappy to bring him down. So he's, I just ran so hard for so long there and just got drilled for my efforts. Made three guys miss and still lost a yard. That's just not fair. Late substitution for the Wolverines as they change running backs. Second and 11 for Vashon from their own 19-yard line. Snap back, and Dickens looking for room, and he can't because he was grabbed in the back by Kellen Barnes, Kellen Barnes. and Barnes throws down Dickens for a sack, and Dickens just now getting to his feet. Kellen Barnes just got himself a handful of jersey and wouldn't let go and threw Dickens down for about a seven-yard loss. Yeah, Barnes showing off the strength there a little bit, the grip strength there. Just had a fistful of jersey from the backside of Dickens and able to swing him around and... Dickens hard to the ground. Took him a second there to, to get up. So third and forever here. Forever being about 18 yards. Out of the spread, Dickens takes the snap around his ankles and wanted to give it to the running back, but he ran into the running back, and now Dickens is held up, held up, which allows the Raider defense to just tee off on him. And Dickens will lose yardage inside the 10 to about the 9, so a loss of about 9 more. And just a frightful set of downs there for Vashon. Yeah, that was uh, not one of their better series, to say the least. And that, they struggled tonight, and that, that, that was certainly a struggle there. Raiders doing lots of different subbing there. They might have had two or three starters left there defensively, but certainly not many left. So here's another punt for Vashon. Snap back is true. The punt is away. It's a nice kick. High, short. Gets a good bounce this time for the Wolverines. And will roll dead at about the 29-yard line. So about a 20-yard punt for the Wolverines. Raiders have another short field to work with. Leading 49-0. And the clock has been running the entire time. So we're going to get out of here in the blink of an eye. Yeah, pretty good punt there, really. Just mm -hmm. had to punt up against the wind. Yep. Wind kind of knocked it down, but had good contact. Ball was... Uh, Soaring pretty well there for a while. And the wind said, go back the other way. Looks Land. like Landon Hemming checks yep. in at quarterback. And Logan Arms is late to the offensive huddle, but they just now blew the play in. It'll be Arms at one of the up backs. And I can't tell who the eye back is in Horn. the power eye. Jonathan Horak is the wide receiver to the near side. And Hemming will turn and give it to that running back who powers forward to pick up about two. Ben Nord is the yeah. tailback. So the Raiders leading 49-0, getting some fresh blood into the ballgame. Nord picked up two. It will be second and eight for QD. Actually, they gave Norton no gain on the play. I thought he got two yards, but no gain on the play. Second and 10 QND from the Vachon 29. Power eye formation for QND. Ball in the middle of the field. And the right guard moves for QND. Looks like Carper now checked into the game at tailback. Spin Norton making some noise tonight. We talked about him on the special teams. Certainly the kickoff team for QND. And also went on that uh, last, that third down sack of Dickens. Nord kind of 
finished him off there at the end. There was two or three Raiders that had a good hand on him, but Nord able to get a good lick in as well defensively. Now here on the offensive side. So the five-yard walk-off on Q&E makes it basically second and 15. Ball is at the Vachon 35. Q&E needs to get just inside the 20. They pitch it wide to Carper. Carper has room to run. Bounces off a hit, bounces off a second hit, and then gets thrown to the ground at about the 25-yard line, but a good 10-yard carry for Grant Carper. And a couple of different people, Kyle, have told me that Grant Carper may be a keeper. He looks really good, the sophomore running back. Yeah, he does. He, he looked real comfortable there on the sweep to the right-hand side. Uh, had real good vision. Cornerback that time for the Wolverines, able to slip past the blocker, and Carper was able to plant his outside foot cut up before that cornerback was able to close in on him. So good awareness there, good vision there, and uh, able to dip upside maybe earlier than he otherwise would have wanted. Ball into far hash as Kyle Vremberlows not faring well here gets the breeze into our face. Give his two and up back, and he has a knee down at about the 24-yard line, so about the gain of the height of a player, and now the back judge throws a flag. Good five, six seconds after the play is over. We'll see what that is all about. Running the ball that time for Q&D was Zach Chapman. He wanted to make a move in the hole, and his knee went down. And then he tried to move forward, and it's unsportsmanlike conduct on Vachon. which will give the Raiders a first down here. They'll mark this off from about the 24, and even if it's half the distance to the goal, it'll give the Raiders a first down. <laughs> you want me to close the window, Kyle? I'll do that. Let's see if that helps. As it's either allergies or a cold wind that has gotten to Kyle Vemberlow here. Half the distance to the goal, puts the ball at about the 13-yard line, first and 10 for QND. Landon Hemming, the quarterback. Carper, the deep back, the power eye. Long count from Hemming. He'll pitch it wide to Carper. Carper trying to bounce it to the outside. Good play by the defender to come up and meet Carper at the point of attack. And that was the quarterback that time, Clifton Dickens. who's taking out some frustration from his quarterback duties here on defense. And Dickens tackles Carper for a loss in the play of about three yards. Take it back to about the 15-yard line. It'll be second and 13 for QND. So Carper has two carries for seven yards. Allergies or cold? I think cold. Go on. Okay. I've shut the window. breeze. I got breeze on both sides. We got our Sam Douglas from Quincy Journal working hard there with the camera. Ben Nord with the carry. Stepped out of a couple ankle tackles. Got the ball forward. Short gain for QND as we're in the final 45 seconds of the third quarter. Jordan Obert with an interception return for a touchdown. The only points here of the quarter. And the Raiders have the ball at the 15-yard line, and it will be third and about 12 for QND. The Raiders may not have to run a play. Well, looks like they will. Power eye, Landon Hemming, the quarterback. Chapman, one of the upbacks. Nord, the deep back. And a false start penalty on QND, I believe, as QND ran, went ahead with the play, and then Nord got face masked and twisted to the ground. So we're going to have a false start, I believe, on Q&E, and then a face mask penalty at the end. So we'll see how they mark that off, and the quarter's going to end while they have this discussion. So tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a 90-second break, and we'll sort things out here when we come back. 49-0, Q&E leads Bashan back in 90 seconds here on WTAD. It's coming to Quincy, and it's a game changer. Fiber is the fastest technology available, and Adams is bringing fiber to the home. Nothing else compares to fiber, and Adams will be connecting Quincy neighborhoods to this lightning-fast internet and telephone service with no gimmick pricing and local service. Find out how your neighborhood can become a fiberhood. Just take the quick survey at followthefiber.net. Adams, the better and now faster way to connect. Federated Insurance is a lot like the family businesses we help protect. For 105 years and counting, Federated has shared the common values that have served our clients well. Federated Insurance, it's our business to protect yours. Call Tony Reese and Quincy at 223-4623. Around here, people matter, and relationships are built on trust. That's the way it is at Town & Country Bank. Real people who like things simple, honest, and done right. 
and our roots are right here. So we're truly local. If you already do business with us, then you know how good banking can be. And if you're not, well, maybe you should. Town & Country Bank. You like how we do business. Part of the HNB Bank family. 665. Or drop by my office next to County Market at 48th and Broadway. And together, we'll review your insurance needs. The Raiders play here on Talk Radio 930 WTAD. 49 nothing. QD leads over Vachon after three quarters of play. The only penalty enforced was the false start penalty on QND. And now on the first play of the fourth quarter, Ben Nord squirms forward for a gain of about two, but there's another flag down. The umpire threw this flag. Yeah, they have not been shy tonight. And technically, the face mask didn't happen because it was a dead ball foul on QND. And Ben it's Nord is now that, cramping. Yeah, it's hard to explain that one to Ben Nord, though. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the face mask happened, he, he thinks. He grabbed my face mask, twisted my head, and threw me to the ground. Yeah. But that play didn't happen. The penalty was holding on QND, which was declined by Vachon. So it's a two-yard gain for Nord. And it will Nord's be... still bothered here. He I think the Raiders are going to try a field goal here. Well, they're not gonna well try maybe not. Nord. I thought I saw a kicker come out of the game, and Landon Hemming is the holder. And the Raiders are going to take a timeout here. This is, uh, does make for a nice kicking surface. Certainly easier to kick off of this stuff. You, we talked about, you know, how hard it, you know, playing in, playing in mud, a mud field, which is what we'd have if uh, without a new field with all the rain we had this week. But field nice and dry, and looks like the, I did see the tee there, or the block, mm -hmm. excuse the me. Block. So Raiders going to go for the field goal. You know, you only get so many chances to practice field goals in game conditions, yeah. and this is one of them. And, you know, let's... Let's see what kind of leg whoever has the chance to kick this ball has. Kicking it into the wind. The ball is at the 17-yard line. So this is going to be about a 35-yard kick into the wind. Ball right in the middle of the field, too. So you can't ask for a better uh, ball position to attempt a field goal. Yeah, it's going to be a tough kick here into the wind. It, it'll take a big leg to. And uh, Sorry to cut you out there, Kyle, but I would think it would be Cooper Reese because he's not the one cramping up. But it looks like it's going to be Connor Daniel who will attempt this kick. They put the block down at the 24, so it's going to be a 34-yard kick for Connor Daniel. Raiders have almost as many kickers as they have fullbacks. Snap back, ball down, kick is up, and it's going to be short and wide to the left. So uh, no good on the kick, and it will be 49-0, QD leading, and Vashon will get the ball at their own 20, first and 10 going the other way. Vashon heading... With the win at their back, towards the south end zone here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, pretty tough chore for Daniel. Certainly a tough kick into that win. Again, I think the idea for Coach Cannell there is try to practice foot, uh, a field goal at game speed. You know, mm -hmm. you can certainly practice on the on the field all day on that if you want, but it's it's certainly not the same as practicing at game speed. And Raiders get one more rep there at game speed with that opportunity. So first and ten, Vashon from their own twenty. Trailing 49 nothing. Only touchdown here in the second half. An interception return for a touchdown by Jordan Ober. Clifton Dickens is still the quarterback for the Wolverines. He has an empty backfield. Two receivers split to both sides. And now a late substitution for Vashon as they needed an extra wide receiver. And Markevian DeRoe comes in. And now some shenanigans and a handoff on a jet sweep. And it will work for about 10 or 11 yards. Actually... Closer to 13 yards. Where was that play been all night? That was interesting. That was almost Canadian football. It was. Play, wasn't was it? Say the same thing. It was Larry Shelton that time for the uh, for the Wolverines started to go in motion to his right. He was lined up uh, as one of the receivers on the right hand side. Took two steps to his right as he was in motion, then turned around, and then took a jet sweep, and by far the sharpest looking play of the night from the Wolverines. That was pretty slick. 14-yard pickup for Shelton, first down and 10 for Vachon from their own 34. And they're going to run the same play to the other side with Markavian DeRoe. DeRoe will get the handoff. He'll sidestep Hilgenbrink and mm. sidestep three more Raiders and take it down the far sideline. And DeRoe gets near midfield. They're going to mark wow. him out of bounds where? <clears throat> Just short of midfield, it appears. And they'll put it down at the 49, so another 15-yard pickup. And the wide receivers are... 
more dangerous running ball here tonight at QND than they are catching the ball. Yeah, and, and you really Duro there, a terrific run. Blake Hilgenbrink had him. Uh, gunned down. Hilgenbrink read it, was gonna make doubt and was gonna make the tackle about a three yard loss, and he was able to put the Duro was able to put the brakes on, get back inside of Hilgenbrink before he cut back outside to the sideline. Same play by Duro, but they fake it to him. Diggins throws over the middle, pass complete to Shelton. Shelton gets a block, a big block, and then stumbles on his own and goes down inside the Raider 35 to about the 31-yard line. So a pickup of 20 yards on the play as Dickens with a nice pass over the middle to Shelton. Yeah, and credit Dalen Jones and Charvez Lewis as well for some nice downfield blocking. Both, uh, both of them were able to catch Raider defenders um, unknowingly there as they were chasing... Uh, chasing down the ball there. Both of them were able to make big blocks, put a couple of different Raiders on their backs. So Wolverines still got lots of fight them here. Want to try to find their way to the end zone here before the time expires. Shelton does that same pirouette motion move. Dickens fakes to him. Now fires over the middle, and the pass is complete to DeRoe, and he's tackled immediately at the 20-yard line. That's a pickup of 11 and another first down for Vashon. And they're pretty pretty much, they've run four plays here in the fourth quarter, Kyle, and picked up a first down on every one of them. Yeah, lo- looking good here offensively. We're seeing what Dickens is capable of when given a little bit of time. He's thrown a couple nice passes there, both of them right on the money, both of them to receivers going across the field. So when given a little bit of time to work and Ben Welper not in his face, Dickens can make some plays. Dickens takes the snap, now runs a quarterback draw, up the middle of the field, gets a block, makes a Raider miss, spins off it, gets thrown forward to about the 9-yard line, which should be another first down and bring up first and goal for the Wolverines. So they've run five plays here on this drive, Kyle, and picked up a first down on every one of them. Yeah. That time Dickens showing off his uh, ability with his feet, as you know, made the, as you mentioned, made the scramble there, cut off to his left, and he would make it happen with his feet that time. So Dickens is thinking this, this football stuff's pretty fun if you get time to, <laughs> time to breathe back there. So first and goal, Vashon. From the Raider nine-yard line. Sidecar right is Charvez Lewis. Two by two, the receiver. Ball on the near hash. And I thought the left guard moved, and apparently he did. Far side linesman's already walked back five yards. Not a necessarily a terrible thing there for uh, for the Wolverines. Looks like Blake Hilgenbrink had that snap count red. Timed his blitz perfectly up the middle, and snap was kind of high to Dickens, so I think by about the time he was going to be able to corral it, Hildenbrink was going to be right there on top of him. So a five-yard penalty will take it back to about the, well, just inside the Raider 15-yard line. First and goal for Vashon. Six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Community leading 49-0. Spread, sidecar right. And the, pass, the snap is past Dickens. He goes back, gets it. Trying to roll out as four Raiders with him and then gets yanked to the ground awkwardly. Yeah, I hope Dickens so. tackled at about the 31 of QND, so a huge loss in the play of 16 yards and a timeout called by Vashon. And we'll take a timeout with them. We'll take a one-minute break. QND leads 49-0. Back in 60 seconds here on WTAD. Around here, people matter, and relationships are built on trust. That's the way it is at Town & Country Bank. Real people who like things simple, honest, and done right. And our roots are right here, so we're truly local. If you already do business with us, then you know how good banking can be. And if you're not, well, maybe you should. Town & Country Bank. You'll like how we do business. Part of the HNB Bank family. Your State Farm agent, Charles Schultz, can help get you to a better state. From cost to coverage, Charles can develop a plan just for you. This is Charles Schultz. Call me at 224-6665. Or drop by my office next to County Market at 48th and Broadway. And together, we'll review your insurance needs. Brings up second and goal for the Wolverines from the Raider 31-yard line. And flags fly again, as I think we had illegal motion. Tim Kincher with Kyle Ramerlo, Bruce Terstegi, our producer. And let's see who the penalty is on. I think we have five. Yes, it is a five-yard walk-off on Bashan. So it'll be second and goal with the ball 
touching the Raider 35-yard line. You know, with this uh, running clock, too, it, it also hampers Vachon's scoring chance here because, you know, you get this penalty and, you know, 25 seconds goes by and there's really not a chance to snap the ball. DeRoe goes in motion, comes back. Dickens fakes, escapes a pass rusher, takes it across the line of scrimmage. He's at the 30, 25, lowers his shoulder and gets to the 20-yard line before he's brought down by Carson Vonderhardy with a nice hit on the quarterback Dickens, but a good pickup for Dickens of 15 yards brings up third and goal from the 20. Yeah, credit Jacob Abel for Q&E to chase Dickens there from the pocket as well. He was in on the play, um, uh, tackle for loss there uh, a couple plays ago as well, and that time chased Dickens, and fortunately Dickens, with his good speed, was able to make a big play out of it. Dickens takes the snap, looking for the deep fade in the corner of the end zone, has the receiver there. And did Mitchell have it? No, he dropped oh. it just inside the boundary. As Mitchell was running at full speed and he got to the boundary in the back of the end zone, I think he tried to kind of patter his feet a little bit to stay in bounds and catch the ball, and he just couldn't maintain control. Yeah, nice ball there from Dickens, mm -hmm. and you're right. It, he was able to run underneath the ball. Uh, might have taken his mind off the ball for just a split second to your, to your point about the uh, out-of-bounds line there. I had taken his concentration off the ball for just a split second. That's all, that's all it took. So Vashon will go for it on fourth and goal from the Raider 20. Empty backfield. Another wide snap, but Dickens corrals it. Rolls out. There's a hold, and it's caught by the official, and then the pass is thrown and complete at the five-yard line, but the receiver will be tackled outside the goal line. So the Raiders could take the penalty and have Vashon have it fourth and goal from the 30 or take the play and take over at their own two-yard line. Actually, it's kind of an interesting choice. I'm sure the Raiders will take the ball, run a couple plays, and um, run this clock out. And that's what the Raiders have decided to do. They're going to take the play as the pass was completed for about 28 yards. Down to the two-yard line, I think, is where they marked it. Oh, actually, it's the three. So, a gain of 27 on the play where the receiver caught the ball and did his darndest to peel off some tackles and get into the end zone, but Isaiah Nelson wasn't able to. And the Raiders will take over on downs at their own three-yard line, leading 49 nothing, and at this point have preserved the shutout. Yeah, good job there by three or four different Raiders able to get their arms around Nelson and bring him down before we got into the end zone. You don't typically see gang tackles 20 yards downfield, but <laughs> you did there from Q&D on an effort to keep Nelson out of the end zone, keep the shutout intact, and uh, look like a nice home opener victory for the Raiders at 49-0. Here's a give up the middle, and the running back for Q&D is thrown to the ground, basically at the line of scrimmage, and that was Chapman again for Q&D. Zach Chapman has carried it twice and picked up a yard. So it will be second and 10 for QND with two minutes to go in the game. And the Raiders leading 49-0. So the Raiders will be 2-1 and one, waiting for the Chargers of Illini West to come to town next Friday night. New Berlin leading Pittsfield, Kyle, 42-6. Oof. And here's one for you. Halftime. Peoria Notre Dame 47, Alleman nothing. Wow. Here's a give up the middle, and it could be a safety. Oh, they're going to give the Raider running back forward progress. And it's going to be third down. Or is it first down? No, it's first, first down. down over, yeah. Vashon is the Raider running back fumbled, according to the officials, and it was recovered by Vashon, and they have it at the one-yard line. Yeah, Raiders offense kind of st standing there stunned. The referee's going to stop the clock. Not They're going to stop sure. the clock and talk this over. Everybody's confused as to who has the ball and where, but apparently the Raiders fumbled. Vashon has it, and they have it at the two-yard line, and Vashon has called a timeout. So the second turnover of the game for QND, second fumble, and I have no idea what running back had it for the moment before he lost it. No, I picked a good time to fumble because we can't pick up numbers from down there. It's <laughs> tough to see, and... Lots of players from both teams in the way. Galesburg leading at the half over United Township, 21 nothing. That's a pure Notre Dame score. My goodness. At half, Camp Point Central, 15, Illini West, 8. Camp Point capitalized on a fumbled kickoff return to take the lead. Okay. I think we saw that a couple times tonight, didn't we? 
McComb leads West Hancock at halftime, 6-0. Pardon me while I scroll down and look take your time. As I'm, it's about this time last week we were uh, getting ready to kick off. After the Raiders went up 7-0, and I believe we restarted the game last week about 9:15. So the kids were getting ready about stretch right about this time. That's all the scores I can provide at this moment, Kyle Vemberlo. Well, you did a great job. Thank you. It's amazing what an iPhone and <coughs> Twitter will do. Tell you, we we t we saw it coming a couple years ago that pure Notre Dame team. <laughs> had some good things coming. I didn't know it was coming on this strong. And you know who's a senior this year is that young man, Andy Shadid. She did, yeah. Shadid Ooh. was, I mean, he was a speedster as a sophomore. I can only imagine what two more years in the weight room has done for that young man. He's got a brother on the team now, too. Right. So they are wreaking havoc on Rock Island Allman here tonight. 47 nothing at the half. After tapping, making Quincy High tap out last year, 49-0 right. at half, and then the Blue last Devils week. got two right. touchdowns in the second half. So 49 nothing, QND leads, but it looks like Bashan is going to have a golden opportunity to get some points on the board here. First and goal at the one after a QND fumble. And I have no idea who fumbled that ball. Whoever it was for QND got tackled at least three yards behind the line of scrimmage, and somehow the ball ended up at the one-yard line in the hands of a Bashan defender. Yeah, it looked like for a while, and you mentioned it, that they might have been thinking safety. Mm-hmm. The entire QND offense kind of stood on the field and watched in confusion as the referee said first down Wolverines. But For the first time tonight, Clifton Dickens under center. And the blow, uh, play blown dead immediately. There's a flag laying at the one-yard line. Offsides. So it's half the distance to the goal, which will take it from the one-yard line to the one-foot line. First and goal, Vashon. You may have heard in the background that Illini West and Camp Point Central are tied at 22 with two minutes to go in the game. And here's a touchdown for Vashon. And it's Clifton Dickens sneaking it in from the one-yard line. So the shutout has been negated here. And the Wolverines will call another timeout. As they'll set up for either a kick or a two-point conversion, and I would assume a two-point conversion here. But it's 49-6, QD leading Bashan here with 30 seconds left to go in the contest. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Michael Libman, financial service representative with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls, even with the internet and email. I feel it's important to really get to know you and your family's needs. Otherwise, how will I know what direction you need to take? Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Lipman. He makes house calls. Well, it, Rashawn won't get too many opportunities to work on their two-point plays during a game, so you might as well go ahead and do it here tonight. Empty backfield, ball in the middle of the field. Dickens sends DeRoe in motion, starts right, comes back left. And they wanted to run a jet sweep, and the handoff wasn't converted, and the Raiders recover in the backfield, so the two-point conversion, no good. So the Raiders lead it by the score of 49-6, and they will start the clock here, and that'll do it for the ball game, I would imagine. I think so, too. So q &E will win it 49-6. Raiders will be 2-1, and one, and they will host Illini West next Friday night at 7 o'clock, and now they'll stop the clock. I was about to throw up for a break, but they'll st they stop the clock here. And We'll wait 25, 30 seconds, and then take our last break of the ball game. But q and &E sees their shutout go by the boards as Clifton Dickens takes it in from one yard out. Ref's still talking to each other. Almost, almost looking like they're saying, should we just run this? Should we run this? <laughs> Are we done? You guys good? Especially when they're changing all these rules for safety on kickoffs. That's really going to be the last play of the game as a kickoff here. Yeah. Although Q&D is calling for their hands team to go on to the field, anticipating an onside kick. So a one-yard run by Clifton Dickens. And then the two-point conversion, no good. Brings us to a 49-6 total. 
Raiders lone second half touchdown and interception return by Jordan Obert of about 45 yards. So CUNY will be two and one. Vashon will be one and three. And CUNY will host Illini West before heading to West Hancock in a couple of weeks. And West Hancock having a pretty good season, Kyle. They're two and oh and in a dogfight with McComb. Sure. Now. Yeah, tough season for them last year. Low on numbers. Um, you know, we saw them week seven, I believe, last year. You're right. And, um, you know, Raiders had their way up in Hamilton, but. Good to see them turning things around a little bit and playing some competitive football, and like you said, off to a nice start. Let's see what Bashan has in mind here, if they're going to go onside kick or just kick the ball away. Lewis approaches the ball and goes with the onside kick, and it's corralled by the Raider up man right at the 50-yard line. And that was Blake Ulrich. That was, that I was think. 53, Hines. Oh, you're right, Asher Hines. Okay. On the ball. It was 53, not 63. So that'll do it. We have the onside kick recovered by QND, the final play of the ball game. QND wins it 49 6 over Vashon. Back in a couple of minutes. This is Raider Football on WTA. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Michael Libman, financial service representative with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls, even with the internet and email to really get to know you and your family's needs. Otherwise, how will I know what direction you need to take? Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Lipman. He makes house calls. 